This was my first ever 3D printer kit, the GTEC Pro-B. GTEC, spelt with a couple of extra E's, is a Far East company in China that offers a couple different types of 3D printer. This is their most affordable offering, the All Acrylic Single Extruder Pro-B. The Pro-B is a Cartesian style printer that advertises a 200 by 200 by 180 millimeter build volume. After you get the kit all assembled, the build volume actually turns out to be around a 185, a 185 by 150 build volume. This is because of the frame design and the extruder location. It comes with an MK8 extruder, a manually leveled heated bed and glass plate, and a fairly nice electronics board that GTEC developed called the GT2560. It's basically a ramps mega combo board like a lot of other printers. The kit runs for around 250 US and most of the time you can find free shipping. These are available from US sellers that can get it to you in usually under 10 days. That's a lot better than the 4-6 to six weeks on a lot of the other kits that are available. Really, this isn't a bad printer kit. Right out of the box with no modification, it prints fairly well. There is no part cooling fan, so your PLA and PETG prints might not look as good as they could, but this printer is rather easy to modify, and there's a lot of parts available on Thingiverse. If you have a newer version of the kit, you will get a GT2560 Revision A Plus board. This will give you a spot to plug in an auto bed leveling probe if you want one. GTEC does offer the Marlin firmware configured right on the board. We'll talk about firmware in a minute. They also give you a configuration for ABS and PLA plastics that can go right into Slick3R. This does reduce the tuning time on the filament and gives you a good place to start, though they're not perfect. This printer has been modified, but I've removed some of them to give you a better idea of how the kit looks out of the box. Things I didn't remove are the metal extruder. You get this plastic version with the kit that tends to slip on the filament when you don't get things set just right. You can print with it, but you might want to consider changing it out. Also, these anti-Z wobble parts. The threaded rods you get with this kit aren't all that straight, and it shows in the prints, so you'll probably want to investigate these. Same with these top Z-rod holders. I've created these to replace the way too tight acrylic ones that came with the kit and added a bearing for good measure. The stock ones will get you by until you can print some new ones if you drill them out a little. I also added some LEDs to the gantry so you can see the models print a little better. One of the nicer mods I made was I created these thumb screws to replace the wing nuts that do the manual bed leveling. This makes one-handed leveling much easier. You may want to consider some glue stick or some hairspray to help your print stick to the bed. You also get a very basic spool holder that serves its purpose. Things I did remove were the print and Z build plate, which makes life so much easier. For me, the less glue or hairspray, the better. Also a part cooling fan and a BL Touch bed leveling sensor, which takes a lot of the guesswork out of these low cost machines. Again, this was the first 3D printer kit that I built, and it took around 15 hours total from open to first print. I could probably do it about half the time now that I've put together a few. Not too bad for an acrylic printer, you have to take all the paper off the parts before you can even get started. The kit does come with around 80 small bags of stuff you have to traverse to get it assembled, but the online manual is pretty well laid out and easy to follow. As with all acrylic kits, watch when tightening the screws. If you go too tight, you will crack the acrylic. The printer does require you to wire AC voltage from the wall, and there's no case for the power supply. If you're careful, this shouldn't be an issue, but watch metal objects around the contacts. Now let's talk about firmware. The default values for feed rate and acceleration were set way too high for a printer of this class. For example, the extruder feed rate was set so high that the filament would skip every time it tried to do infill, no matter what the slicer settings were set at, even on PLA. So you might want to investigate this issue. One of the best things I've found about GTEC is their support. It's not the fact that they have good support, it's the fact that they have support. You can get online chat and email support if you need it. You can also order pretty much any part for your printer from their site for a reasonable price. You will, unfortunately, have the long ship time on these. I've really only had three failures with this printer after probably thousands of hours of print time. I've had the X idler bearing fail, the Y idler bearing fail, and probably the most concerning, the wire that supports the heated bed actually melted the connector where it connects to the main board. You might want to consider soldering these wires directly to the back of the board to avoid this issue. I have put hundreds of hours into tuning to improve my knowledge of 3D printing and the prints of this kit. With all the tuning and modification, this kit prints pretty well and has proven to be a workhorse. At this point, I can usually just send it a print and wait for it to be done. 
Very few complaints out of this printer. This Benchy was printed in PLA using the modifications that I show in this review. Not too bad for no part cooling fan. This is a model that was done with all of the modifications intact. This is PLA plastic at a 0.2 layer height. The resolution and quality don't turn out too bad. All in all, for a sub $300 printer kit, this has been a good experience. On a scale of 1 to 10, if most Far East printers were around a 2, I'd put GTEC at around a 4, maybe putting the Prusa Mark II at around an 8 on this scale. If you're looking for a low cost 3D printer kit, I would definitely give GTEC a look. As with most reviews, I have not been in contact with GTEC. I have purchased this kit from a US reseller with my own funds, and all opinions expressed are my own. Hopefully this review is helpful. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up or consider subscribing to my channel. If not, please leave your thoughts in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.